Welcome to this Java Break with Basis. The topic for this session is Reporting Choices with Barista. Barista is Basis' rapid application development framework for generating modern GUI applications. In prior Java Breaks, we've discussed how you can utilize Barista to quickly generate a GUI application from a Basis Data Dictionary. We've also shown you how you can generate it from a third-party RDBMS. My name is Nico Spence, I'm the CEO of Basis, and today I'm going to be joined by Chris Hawkins. Chris is the project manager for Add-on Software, the accounting building blocks built on Barista. Let's have a look at the agenda for today's session. Firstly, we'll answer the question, what is Barista? Then we'll look at some of the reporting choices that we have with Barista. We'll show you how you can take legacy reports and integrate them within the Barista Dockout system, perfectly suited for columnar type reports. For more complex or graphically rich reports, you can utilize the iReport design tool, and then by virtue of the BB Jasper utility, you can once again integrate those into the Barista framework. And then finally, for those custom reports of invoices, picking lists, where we have very complex form type outputs to replace pre-printed stationery, we can utilize the BBJ form object or the format text mnemonic to generate those reports and embed them again within Barista. And then we'll take your questions. Let's talk about the Barista application framework. What is it? It's a data dictionary based GUI development platform it's a workbench for developing data-centric applications. And finally, it's an application runtime environment for end users. This rapid application development environment facilitates application migration by integrating GUI or custom GUI with the Barista-generated GUI application. What is the architecture and what are the interfaces provided by Barista? Firstly, it's written in object-oriented BBJ that makes it cross-platform and you can have all of the deployment choices that you have with BBJ, you have for your Barista applications. It's organized as an MDI, a multiple document interface, although you can run Barista applications in the SDI framework and take advantage of multiple screens. It has an optional integrated menu panel, and it's delivered with context-sensitive toolbar and menu bar, once again allowing you to plumb in any very complex custom BBJ code into the Barista framework. What are the components of Barista? It has an extended data dictionary. It has a form manager for managing the construct of the various forms. It has a form designer to design the layout of the form. It has a core point editor where you can place your extended business logic. It has a built-in inquiry system that's SQL based that automatically generates an SQL inquiry engine on top of your data dictionary defined database. And it has a menu designer where you can very simply and easily add Barista generated apps to your Barista framework or older legacy KUI or GUI apps into your menu framework. It has a role based security manager, allows you to limit access to data by field, by category, or by role of user. And then finally, the document output system, which is what we're going to focus on today. So, document output. We can look at a simple example of a vendor name and address listing. And let's talk about some of those constructs. We have various output types, PDF, CSV, XML, text. We have the ability to output via email as a PDF attachment. We can also render output into a fax output by utilizing a third-party inexpensive Java library. Some additional output types that are available via BB Jasper if one's using the iReport design reports, or XLS and ODT, Open Desktop. We also have the ability to utilize the document output subsystem to manage our report job streaming with additional notifications. So let me hand over to Chris and let's see Barista's reporting in action. So we'll begin with Dockout. I'm going to run the add-on vendor comments listing. This is a typical dockout report that presents on screen as a PDF view. You'll notice the toolbar in the view window has several options for 
viewing and manipulating the document. Many of these options are intuitive and uh, exactly what you would expect in a graphical environment. For example, if I have a multiple page report, I can use the back and forward arrow buttons to page through. I can type in a page number. I can also use the fit to width or fit to screen buttons to control how the report looks in the viewer, as well as using traditional zoom in and zoom out buttons. Let's take a look now at some of the other options that we have available when running Dockout reports. This first button allows you, with a single click, to save a copy of this document as a PDF in the Document Archive. Once it's in the Document Archive, you can use Document Inquiry to later search for, find the document, reprint it, and so on and so forth. The next button allows you to print this document, hard copy, to any installed system printer. Moving to the right, we have three buttons that provide access to additional dockout features and function. This first button launches the dockout column adjustment form. Now with this form, I can actually click and drag the columns allowing me to resize and revise the look of my report on the fly. If I save these new settings and refresh my report display, notice how I've widened the distance between the columns on my report. Next is the document settings form. This form gives us access to additional formatting functionality. We can adjust margins. We can instruct Barista to auto-fit the document. Or we can specify portrait or landscape. We can specify fixed width font if we'd like change the font size, and so on. One of the most important features about the document print settings window is it is here where we can instruct Barista not only, for example, to direct output to the viewer, but also output this document directly to a PDF or CSV. You can select more than one output type. You can ask Barista to notify you with a little message when it's created the particular output type, or you can do it silently. This is a terrific feature for things such as registers or audit trails, so that if a user forgets to manually save, or if a user prints and you know the printer jams, the inevitable printer jam, you don't lose the document. It will have already been saved in the archive for you. Finally, notice that we have a different checkbox here called Unformatted. When we check Unformatted, we have the ability to save our Dockout report as just a raw ASCII print stream. So that now, when I print this report, rather than picking a system printer, it's going to go directly to the printer I've specified in this raw fixed font setting with no formatting. What does this do for me? It's great for situations where I may have older style printers still on the system, dot matrix uh, or, or other impact printers that wouldn't be able to accept the print commands to produce a proportional font type of document with bold and so on and so forth. It's also nice if I want to be able to interface with some sort of third-party tool, such as Unform, where I want to pass a raw ASCII print stream to the third-party tool, and it will then manipulate and uh, massage that print stream based on rules defined in the tool itself. The Output Selection button gives us the ability, again, to print to System Printer 
or to PDF, the same as these two buttons on the toolbar, or to immediately save in one or more of the specified formats. But beyond that, it lets us also specify instant email or faxing of this document. Let's take a look at how an email would work. I can select PDF email attachment and click the Create button. Barista will launch a form in which I can fill in some information as to the email account ID. In this case, we've set up an email account ID that specifies the server name, whether or not authentication is required, the port number, so on and so forth. Then I can fill in standard information from to subject, the file name is already filled out with the document ID that Barista has saved for us, and we can give some message text. When I click this Run Process button, Barista will immediately send this report off as an email attachment. And now if I check my email, I can see that the vendor comment listing has been sent using the name that Barista stored the document under, and I can either view or download the attachment. Now let's take a look at some general dockout settings. In the Barista Administration menu, you'll find the Document Management subsystem. We mentioned before that Dockout saves all of these documents, and I can find those documents when I run Document Inquiry. This grid gives me all of the same sorting and searching and filtering capability as any other Barista Inquiry so that I can quickly find the document that I want and then call it up in its native application for reprinting or additional handling. Document groups give you a way to specify where documents should be stored for different classifications of users in your system. You may have a document group for the Accounts Payable Department, a document group for the Accounts Receivable Department, and so on. And you would assign each user a document group so that you can control where across the network the documents are stored. Document print settings here is the same form as before, but in this instance, lets us access print settings for any document as opposed to just the document we're viewing. In the email accounts form, we can establish an email account for use when sending Dockout via email. Last but not least, let's take a look at the Barista Fax Email Control Queue. The fax email control queue is an API, if you will, between your application and Barista and lets you set up automatic fax or emailing for batch print jobs. For example, in add-on software, when we generate invoices or statements, we instruct our application to put an entry in the fax email control queue for every individual invoice or statement that's generated. At the end of the batch print job, we can launch the fax control queue window. We have a chance to delete or deselect any items that we may not want to send or change from email to fax or vice versa. And then when we click the process button, Barista will process everything in the queue and then remove each entry from the queue. So you can see from this tour of Dockout that once your application 
supplies Dockout with some data. Dockout can in turn provide you with quite a bit of additional functionality with no additional code required and at no additional cost. We've had a good look now at Dockout and given you an idea of all of the functionality available to you for your application reporting. I want to take just a couple of minutes to give you an idea now of how we got here. We mentioned earlier that in the add-on application, and this may be the case in yours as well, we had a large number of report programs that we didn't want to rewrite from scratch. We wanted to bring them across from the older character version of the application into Barista. So I want to look at just a few code samples to give you a rough idea of how we made the transition and may help you in your transition as well. We'll take a look in the basis IDE first just to give you an idea of where we started. This code may look familiar to you. This is the way many of our add-on back-end report programs looked. We opened a print channel using a public that gave us back the channel number. In the main report loop we were responsible for keeping track of the line count so that we could handle headings, printing data directly to the print channel, incrementing the line count, going back for more. Uh, very typical sort of back-end report program. We wanted, as we made the transition to Barista, to modernize this code, not only for Dockout, but just in general. So our first pass through the code lowercased everything, removed the line numbers, made use of structured syntax. We removed as many go-to's from the code as we could. So we used if and if blocks, while when blocks, symbolic labels, string template notation. These were all things we opted to do to modernize our code, not mandatory for a transition to Dockout. And note that we still were printing directly to a print channel. So we changed the program somewhat, but we didn't change its core functionality. After this first pass, we were able to run this code in Barista and verify that our reports came up in the basis print preview and looked like we expected them to. Once that was done, we were able to begin the conversion from this phase to Dockout. And let's take a quick look at that. In transitioning to Dockout, there are really only a few main steps. You can refer to the Dockout tutorial that's available online for a more detailed explanation. But basically, we copy-paste in some lines of code that are standard in any Dockout program. We also tell Dockout what our column headings will be. Dockout will be handling the pagination and the column headings for us. We don't need our own report heading subroutine anymore. So we build a column string array and give Dockout the information that we need to construct our column headings. And finally, you'll notice much of the code here in the main report processing loop is the same as it was after our first modernization pass with this exception. Rather than printing directly to the print channel, we're no longer opening a printer. We're simply placing our print data in Barista's outvect vector. When we exit the program, Barista takes a look at outvect to see if it's null. And if it's not, Barista will automatically launch Dockout. So that's really the heart of converting a program that prints in the traditional way so that it can make use of Dockout. Thanks, Chris. Now let's have a look at some of the more complex reporting types. Let's imagine that we had reports that weren't really columnar in structure. We can utilize the iReports open source design report design tool to generate those complex reports, embed images, have hyperlinks, um, perhaps have some charts embedded within those reports. How do we embed those or run those within Barista? Let's, let's hand over to Chris again to see some of that in action. In add-on, for example, we have a vendor detail listing. 
This was another report that, because of its complexity, wasn't well suited to running inside Dockout. We can see from this report that there are several sections. We have the main vendor information section, comments, purchase addresses, and so on. Each section has its own format. So it really wasn't possible to impose one column structure on this and send it into Dockout. So we choose to use iReport instead. In the iReport designer, we can take a quick look just at the header section of this report and you can see that it's a graphical tool that lets me click and drag so it's easy to move fields around on the form. And we can also see here several sub-reports that are defined. These represent the different reports showing the comments, the purchase history, and so on and so forth. We chose to write this series of reports using SQL. We designed and tested this SQL in the Enterprise Manager and then transferred it here into iReports.